uh, is that transposons may be a double-edged sword. Uh, in a young organism, they serve as tumor suppressors. They get activated in pre-malignant cells, trigger interferon response and cell death. So that's useful. Uh, but during aging, they start to play a negative role because they can become activated indiscriminately, not only pre-malignant cells, but in, in all cells, they become activated. They also drive interferon response, but now you know that it serves no purpose. Uh, it just drives sterile inflammation and promotes age-related disease. And actually this concept of double-edged sword, it's also been proposed earlier by Judy Campisi in relation to cell with senescence where it serves as a tumor suppressor um, earlier in life, uh, but then with aging, it becomes a driver of inflammation and even driver of malignancy. So that probably something typical for tum of tumor suppressor mechanism that uh, they benefit us early, but later in life, they become also contributors to the aging process. We now, we meaning the field now, I think would agree that Senescence can best be understood as a stress response. It's the way cells have, a, um, have evolved a, a program to respond to certain types of stressors. The way we now think of the stress response is that it's a double-edged sword. There's tons of data that go back two decades or more showing that the arrest of cell proliferation is extremely important for preventing cancer. So that stressed cell is in danger of becoming a cancerous cell, and the stress response intrinsic to the cell says, no way, you will never divide again, and therefore you cannot form a tumor. So there are mouse models now, and even some people with mutations in the genes that regulate that growth arrest, and those people die in early death due to cancer, and the mice die in early death due to cancer. So we know the growth arrest suppresses tumorigenesis. The, secreting, the secreted factors we also now know can be beneficial for tissue repair and wound healing. So we've shown, for example, in the skin, senescent cells appear at the wound, and they produce growth factors that help the wound heal. That's the good news. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the bad news is, as these cells gradually accumulate with age and don't disappear, they begin to drive this process of chronic inflammation. And that chronic inflammation caused by senescent cells is also a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it attracts the immune cells that will eventually begin to cause tissue destruction and degeneration. On the other hand, the cytokines that attract the immune cells can also have an effect on neighboring cells and cause them to not function properly. So that's the bad side. The good news is there are very few senescent cells in young people. And below age 50 or 60, you don't see very many of those cells in tissues. But with after about the midpoint of our lifespan, they become detectable. And now you can imagine that those cells, as they build up, they start to drive the pathologies that we associate with aging.